Team Keep It Clean, we got a lot of really, really good news from the Baltimore Ravens over the past couple of days. So let's just dive straight into it. And also make sure you check out the audio versions of these podcasts on Spotify. The link is down below in the description. So with Lamar Jackson, um, of course, it's been talked about so much with him and Rashad Bateman, how their connection is going to be. We don't got to talk about it again. But it's nice to see when Rashad Bateman being healthy again. They're saying that he's looked a lot more better than he did, of course, last week. Remember when he was dealing with those injuries. But apparently, uh, Lamar Jackson, it says he threw one of his prettiest balls all summer long with a deep connection to Rashad Bateman that covered about 60 Yard. So that's a beautiful thing to hear, especially when we got the season literally right around the corner. We need these two. The Baltimore Ravens need these two to be on point. We understand it ain't going to be perfect. Like, nobody's connection is perfect. Well, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, there, there probably isn't. Lamar Jackson, Zay Flowers are close, but you get what I'm saying. Lamar Jackson, Rashad Bateman, they got to be on the money because it is essential that they are. Uh, because Bateman can be special. We know Lamar Jackson's already special, but Bateman, he has the potential to be special. But a lot of us are tired of talking about potential. I, I hate when we have to keep having that same conversation about people. Potential, potential, potential. We want to see it in action. So if they continue this, then we finally will. Now, we know Lamar Jackson. He likes playing. But yesterday, he gave us a quick bit of a scare because they said that he was flexing his lower ankle um, area for a good bit. And then he left and went to the locker room. But they said he only missed like 10 minutes and then he came back and finished the rest of practice. So that was real, real nice to, to hear. I mean, it was like it was one of those roller coaster updates that we saw because they were like, oh, man, Lamar Jackson left with an ankle injury. But then he came back and he finished the rest of practice. So with him finishing the rest of practice, that was the best part about that because that really lets you know, all right, he got a little banged up for like two seconds, but then he came back and he finished. Because enough of these reports you see where a player, they get a little banged up, they go off to the sideline and they head off with the trainers and whatnot, and they don't come back. Or even if they do come back, they just stay on the sideline for the rest of the practice. But with Lamar Jackson, he didn't stay on the sidelines. He came out and finished. So that was super, super important. And just sticking with Lamar Jackson, something that he spoke about yesterday was playing at a lighter weight. He said that he has a lot more energy now that he's playing at a lighter weight again. And that's crazy to think about, like something that I will never, ever forget. Shout out to my guy, All 22 Cuts, because when we had him on the channel, he talked about this years ago with Lamar Jackson. He talks about how he just, he's something super, super special, as we already know, but his level of energy and his stamina is just crazy because for years now, I think it's been for what, the last four or five years, maybe longer, maybe a little bit shorter, but around that last four or five years, Lamar Jackson has been the Baltimore Ravens leading Russia every single year. We know that, and, we, and that takes a lot itself, but He's doing that all the same time while being QB1. So to take on all that responsibility, that could take a lot out of you physically, mentally too. That could take so much out of you, but you never see him complaining. You never see him whining. You never see him saying, oh, man, I don't feel like doing all this. No, he just goes out there and does it every single week, every single week. So the fact that now he said he got even more energy now that he's lighter, expect him to be even more special. Every week, every day, we think about our guy, Tyler Linderflinder. What's going on with him? When is he going to be back? When is he going to make his grand return to the Baltimore Ravens? Harbaugh gave us a little bit of an update on that yesterday. He said uh, that Linderbaum is on schedule and he's been taking part in the team's walkthrough. So that's good. That's good because that means he's getting that much closer. And we know, like, Tyler Linderbaum is somebody who we need in order for this Baltimore Ravens offense to be at its best we need one of the best centers in not the entire AFC North, not the entire AFC, but one of the best centers in the entire NFL in Tyler Linderbaum. And just sticking with uh, the offensive line, Harbaugh, he said he's close. We ain't there yet, but he said he's close to making the decision with their starters on the offensive line. And that's something that we all waiting for, something that we all been anticipating because we, we've been wondering, all right, who's it going to be? Officially. Now, if I had to take a guess, and I, I think most of y'all will agree, but let me know if you don't, of course. But if I had to take a guess what the Baltimore Ravens starting offensive line would be from left to right, Ronnie Stanley, obviously. Left guard, Andrew Voorhees. I feel like all signs have led to Andrew Voorhees being the Baltimore Ravens starting left guard. Uh, we'll see. It's still officially to be determined, but I think it's going to be him. 
At center, of course, our guy, Tyler Linderflin, the Tyler Linderbaum, best center in the league. I'm going to just go ahead and say that. But right guard, right guard is where there seems to be a bit of a question mark. But I think they will go with the unorthodox approach, with the um, non-conventional guard and Daniel Filele. See, and I like that they're doing that because with Daniel Filele, if he can get it going, he can get more comfortable there too. It's going to take him some time. He's going to have some reps that look like, ooh, yikes. But then he's going to have some reps that look like, oh, yeah, let's go, baby. But with Daniel Filele, this is stuff that I do in Madden because I want the big boys up front. But one thing Daniel Filele just got to get more about him is nastier. Just straight up nastier. Don't feel bad for the guy in front of you. Yeah, it could be your friend. It could be your old college teammate or something like that. You may know him or whatnot. He may be cool. He may be a good person. But Daniel Filele, don't be afraid to just get straight up nasty. But I think it's going to be Daniel Falele at right guard. And I, I think he'll win that over Ben Cleveland. And Ben Cleveland will be a debt piece. That's what I want him to be. Because I, I, I know a lot of people say, oh, get rid of Ben Cleveland. I should trade Ben Cleveland. The, the Ravens need to move on from Ben Cleveland. Keep him around for this last year. Let him ride out this last year. Go get a contract somewhere else. And maybe, hey, next year after that, you, you'll get a comp pick for Ben Cleveland. Who knows? But I would keep Ben Cleveland as a depth guy. Uh, obviously, they've been moving him around, having him play some center. They had him play some guard. Uh, so he got some experiences in some different places on the offensive line. But I'd keep him as a depth piece. But anyway, Daniel Falele at right guard and then at right tackle, of course, second round pick. Roger Rosengarden. Now, just a quick update on Mark Andrews. Uh, John Harbaugh talked about him, and he's still obviously been missing practice, and we know the reason why he was just in a car accident. But uh, Harbaugh did say he just got some minor, but he is a okay. And, and I'm going to trust Harbaugh on that. Reason being because, again, Mark Andrews came out of the car accident unscathed. And, and like we talked about when that news first broke, sometimes you can have sort of a, um, a late reaction. Your body can have a late reaction to responding to a car accident uh, because initially your body might be in shock like, oh, my goodness, what just happened? But then a couple hours later, even a couple of days later, then you might start feeling a little sore, feel a little achy here and there. Uh, so I'm sure that's probably what Mark Andrews is going through. But I ain't got no worries about him uh, being fine. But. I cannot say the same for another one of Baltimore Ravens tight ends, that being Scotty Washington, because they said um, Scotty Washington, he unfortunately broke his hand uh, on a special teams play in the preseason game against the Atlanta Falcons. So that will keep him out for who knows how long. I wonder if they'll just put him on injury reserve because, I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't going to be making the active roster because obviously the Ravens got their three tight ends set on the active roster. But could he have possibly had a practice squad job? Um, but I think that'll probably end up landing him on injury reserve. We've continued to talk about all offseason how the Baltimore Ravens secondary is pretty loaded when you really think about it. They got a lot of quality guys as both starters and quality guys as depth pieces as well. Somebody that could end up being a starter this season, and he's going to get plenty of playing time, uh, that's Nate Wiggins. And Nate Wiggins, of course, that first preseason game, we got a little scared, but he has since returned to practice, and he really been doing his thing. He, like, really, really returned to practice because it was said yesterday that he had a nice interception uh, against Devin Leary uh, on a pass intended for Kadir Ishmael. And he also um, had a nice pass breakup in the end zone during the red zone period. So Nate Wiggins showing like, hey, I'm here. And I'm like all the way back. Yeah, of course, I'm going to be ready for week one against him, Chiefs. I got to shut down Xavier Worthy. I know a lot of y'all Ravens fans wanted him, but y'all ain't get him. Y'all got me. And I'm going to show you why I'm worth it. But speaking of the secondary, Pepe Williams. Yesterday, he picked off Lamar Jackson. Oh, that is great for Pepe Williams. That's amazing for him, just for his confidence, just for his own belief in himself, but also for the coaching staff's belief in him. Um, that's, again, another guy who's going to be a depth guy, but they, they got that potential, man. It's there. We, we, we've seen it with him. I remember his rookie year, Pepe Williams, he was very, very sticky. He reminded me of... Um, was it Anthony Averett who was like this? I think it was Anthony Averett. Anthony Averett was somebody that he was right there by the uh, by the wide receiver when he, when, when he was in coverage. He was so close to the wide receiver, but he would just have trouble finishing the play. He would just have trouble closing the play, breaking up the pass, whatever it may be. That's something that, I, that in my opinion, that's what Anthony Averett struggled with the most. But with Pepe Williams in his rookie year, I remember that. It was the same thing. And he didn't get... He didn't have so many like opportunities out of this world, but when he was out there, that's what I would know. He would be right there, right there as a defender with the wide receiver. He wouldn't was not getting burned, was not getting dusted, nothing like that. But sometimes he would just struggle to make the play, and I know it was like that a lot too 
uh, with the safety that we recently, Chuck Clark, it was like that with him a lot too. Um, but with Pepe Williams, he been making some plays, man. He been making some plays not only in practice but in the preseason games as well. So this bodes well for him, especially, again, with Arthur Millette being out, that cornerback spot, it could be opened up. Now, recently, especially since that last preseason game and us just noticing how Tez Walker just hasn't really been actively a part of the Baltimore Ravens offense for whatever the reason may be. And I know Harbaugh did say that he was dealing with a rib injury. And then he had missed uh, a little bit of practice this week. Um, so there have been conversations about... That S word that the Baltimore Ravens, they love using when they not ready for somebody to be out there on the field yet, but they don't want them to go anywhere. Stash. A lot of us, especially myself, I was thinking, uh-oh, looking like Tez Walker could end up being stashed by the Baltimore Ravens. Would they stash a fourth round pick? Hey, if he ain't ready, it's possible. But Tez Walker say, hold up now, buddy. I ain't trying to be put away. Not for now. Because Tez Walker today, he returned to practice. So that's great for him. I, I, I just, I really hope, like, he has the best practice in the world this week. I hope when we go against the Green Bay Packers in joint practice that he just absolutely goes crazy. I hope in a preseason game against the Green Bay Packers that he just tears it down. And they, like, really look for him. He gets open. He makes plays. Because I think he needs it. I, I think he needs it big time. Somebody else who... I was thinking that we could possibly use that S word with stash was Rasheen Ali because he had missed a good chunk of practices recently too. And the Baltimore Ravens even went and signed veteran running back John Kelly. So I was like, ooh, oh, oh yeah, that, that ain't looking good for Rasheen Ali. He's probably getting ready to get stashed too, especially because he hadn't really made a mark at the running back position for the Baltimore Ravens. But he, just like Tez Walker, he said, wait a minute, because he returned to practice today as well. Uh, and so did Eddie Jackson, Josh Ross, defensive lineman Josh Tapau. So Ravens are getting a lot of guys back because they know like, hey, this is it. Seriously, like when you think about it, this is it. What's sad is that th this week for a lot of people, um, well, actually, these next two weeks. But this is going to be a lot of players' final NFL game, not only for the Baltimore Ravens, but for their careers, for their NFL careers. There's a lot, and it's unfortunate. It's a sad part about the business, man. And, and this goes for all 32 teams. This week will be a lot of guys' last game playing in the league ever, ever. Because with you having to go from 90 men to 53 men on the roster and you only got, what, 12 to 16 for the practice squad, a lot of guys' dreams are going to officially be dying uh, real, real, real soon. And it's real sad to think about, man, because people, they work their entire lives for this. They, they put in so much time and so much effort for something that it can be done so fast. It, it can come and go quickly. Um, so this is such a tough week for a lot of people. So, you know, like it's going to be a lot of extra emotions flying. It's going to be a lot of uh, extra emotions and, and a lot of people just really putting that extra effort in to this week of practice and this week uh, in that last preseason game too. Now, while we did get a lot of guys back at practice, there were some that were missing and some veterans that they already got their spots locked on the team. They were missing, but still, it was, hey, what's going on with them? And that was Marlon Humphrey and Pat McCary. Marlon Humphrey, of course, starting outside corner. Well, starting inside corner for the Baltimore Ravens too. Just a starting corner for the Baltimore Ravens. He could play inside, outside, wherever you need him to be. He's willing to do it. Um, and then our sixth man, Patrick McCary, uh, somebody who has started literally every single offensive line position that there is. Um, so he's somebody, he's the perfect example of stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. But they were missing from practice today. But uh, John Harbaugh did say that they are fine, they're good, nothing to worry about. So we should see them back real soon. And somebody else who was out for a little bit, but we saw him and we saw him a lot uh, this past Saturday in that preseason game because he finally got cleared to play football was David Ajabo. David Ajabo said that there's no better feeling than being back healthy and on the football field again. And that's what we want for him. We, we talked about it earlier with Rashad Bateman that we are just we're so tired of talking about potential. We, we tired of 
using that word with certain players. And Rashad Bateman, we've used it with him a lot. Uh, and we also use it with David Ajabo a lot. Because with these two players, like, there's no doubt in that they both have talent. They both do. One's a first-round pick. One's a second-round pick. And while your draft status does not determine if you have talent or not, both of those guys, they deserve to go where they went. And Ajabo, like, if it wasn't for the injury, he would have been even higher. But it happened, so it is what it is. But with David Ajabo, he said that last year he made a very, very tough decision and as a football player you got to understand like that's it's extremely tough because NFL stands for not for long and your spot is not safe whether you're first second whatever the case may be your best uh, availability your best ability is availability and if you're not available then what good are you to the team that is a cutthroat business but David Ajabo said he could have played last year and he said he could have played hurt last year he could have played injured last year but he said he was thinking about the long term when it came to his career. And that's tough for players. Because like we said, like if, if you're out, there's somebody else that's going to fill your spot. No matter who you are, no matter what position you are, if you are out, they will find somebody to replace you. And that's whether that person is better than you, whether that person is worse than you, they will find somebody to fill in for you and replace you. So a lot of these football players like, man, like, that, that's why they push themselves. That's why they continue to be out there, even if they hurt, even if they got something going on, even if they got an undisclosed injury or a disclosed injury, they still force themselves to be on the field because they don't want nobody taking that spot. But David Ajabo was like, okay, he said, Jadavion and Clowney, oh, y'all signed for a one-year deal? Oh, yeah, I'll be straight. Oh, oh I got my my, my boy uh, Adafi. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we good. He, 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 oh, Kyle Vanoi, oh, y'all signed him to a one-year deal? Okay. Who I, I think I should be good, but no, on a serious note, though, I am glad that he did make that decision to think about the long term, because for all of us, no matter what it is, no matter what the situation is, it can be very hard and very difficult to have long term thinking because we want stuff right here, right now. Um, and when we for whatever it is that we want, whatever it is that we aspire for, uh, we want immediate results. So when we don't see those and we don't get those, it can be tough and it can be like, man, this is taking forever. But. With David Ajabo, he made the right decision for his career and his future. Now, somebody whose current career uh, is off to a bit of a shaky start is that of Adisa Isaac. Um, the Baltimore Ravens drafted Adisa Isaac, and from jump, they put him on the non-football injury list. He was dealing with some hamstring issues and just kept bothering him for the longest. Then it was like, hey. Adisa Isaac is at practice. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, let's go. Then Adisa Isaac even played in his first preseason game. I was like, oh, yeah, that's what it is. But then he ended up leaving in the middle of that game due to injury. But what was that injury? Well, Harbaugh gave us an update on it today. He said the following. Um, he said that, ha uh, excuse me, not Harbaugh, Adisa Isaac has a soft tissue injury now in his other leg. So he was dealing with hamstrings in one leg, and then now he's dealing with a soft tissue injury in the other one. So that's not really looking good. He said, Ham Jeff Zrebik said, hamstring issues have been tough for the rookie to shake. Now, I remember something um, <clears throat> Jeff Zrebik also said uh, when it came to Adisa Isaac. I believe he said this, that he just hasn't really been making many plays. Now, again, he was ramping up and whatnot. He's, he got off to a, a late start. Um, but I wonder if he would end up being a stash candidate for the Baltimore Ravens. I, I, I wonder that um, because what role would he have this year with the team? I, I think, that's just my opinion, um, I think that he may be one of those, because um, what we have, 53 players on the roster, then you have seven inactives. I think that that could be, along with, like, an offensive lineman here and there, but y'all know how it goes, and maybe a cornerback or two. But I think he may be, he would be one of those seven inactive. So, depending on how this injury is, the, the timing of it sucks. It's, it's the worst. But um, I think the Ravens may think about uh, stashing him, just putting him on injury reserve before the season starts uh, and ending his season. I'm not saying that I want that to happen at all, but – when you think like the Baltimore Ravens may be thinking and you think business-wise and you think roster-wise and whatnot, that may be the role that they end up 
taken. Now, something that was really, really special that I just loved, I really, really appreciated, and this came out of Saturday's game uh, against the Atlanta Falcons. We all remember Emory Jones passing that deep 65-yard bomb to Dayton Wade. We loved it. It was amazing. It, it was just great. And I've continued to say from jump, when I first, 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 first watched film on Dayton Wade when the Baltimore Ravens signed him, I'm like, oh my goodness, this dude reminds me of Zay Flowers. He reminds me of Zay Flowers because the way that he moves, his agility mixed with his speed, and he's a little low to the ground. Like, oh, yeah, this, this, he just reminds me of Zay Flowers. But this, listen to this. This came from Bo Smoker. He said, undrafted rookie Dayton Wade, who had the highlight reel double move touchdown in that game against the Falcons, he gave credit to Zay Flowers, who told him, hey, you belong here. Go be you. And I, I, I love that. I love that. Something that we were thinking about is this receiver room. Because we've continued to have conversation like, who is it going to be in this wide receiver room? Who is it going to be the final six, seven? I doubt seven. So probably the final six. Raven, I don't think Ravens keeping those seven receivers like that. Um, could Dayton Wade really make a push to get that spot? I think, number one, so much depends on everything with Tez Walker. If the Ravens end up keeping him on the roster, then... No, I don't think Dayton Wade is going to be able to make it. Or unless they make some crazy decision with Deontay Hardy. But other than that, then no. But if, depending on what happens, I think, I think everything really revolves around Tez Walker, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Everything for all these receivers that are trying to make it, all these undrafted rookie free agents, some of the free agents that they sign, like a Russell Gage and Anthony Miller. I think Anthony Miller probably got the leg up on Russell Gage by far. But we'll see. But I think with a lot of those guys, so much depends on Tez Walker. Walker this last game this last week of practice before the real stuff starts so his injury his health so much depends on him so depending on how things go with Tez then I think that could open up the door of possibility for a couple of other wide receivers and y'all don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on and also leave a like on the video but also if you would like to have your question featured in the video you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Next question came from my guy, Reese. He said, the LJ narrative from Reese. First of all, I hope you and the family are doing well. Hey, I appreciate you, Reese. He said, hope for your channel to continue to grow. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. I need that, but I appreciate that a lot, man. He said, also, thanks for providing an atmosphere where I listen to an honest and real podcast minus any foul language. So, <laughs> it's Team Keep It Clean, baby. So, I appreciate you. I uh, says so I don't have to worry about my kiddos hearing any of that junk. No, I I I appreciate that a lot. Seriously, man. Um, that's what it's about, man. It, it's this is a channel for everybody. I want everybody to be able to enjoy. I want everybody to be able to listen together. You ain't got to turn the volume down. You ain't got to sneak around. No, everybody can enjoy it all at the same time, all together. And I, I appreciate that a lot. Seriously, man. Thank you. Uh, he said, my question is, what happens to the narrative if Lamar has an excellent game? Say 19 for 22, 300 plus yards, three touchdowns, and running for another, no picks, but our defense gives up a late touchdown or field goal. Let's say Lamar ends up with 20 seconds left on the clock with 80 yards for a game-winning touchdown or tie and doesn't make it happen. A very unrealistic position for a win. Does the classic goalpost get pushed further for Lamar Jackson? Well, let me let me let me finish first. But of course, he said, I'm sure Nick Wright would still have something negative to say. In my opinion, Lamar hasn't played his best in the playoffs as a whole. And I have no idea why he's won games in every way possible. Large stage games, comeback wins, low scoring games, shootouts, hostile territories, cold rain, etc. It's true. But in all those games that you mentioned, the Baltimore Ravens, they play winning football. They play winning football. I don't know what it is or why they do it. Come playoff time, they decide to go against everything that's got them there. They continue to go against their identity. They don't know who they are. They decide they want to be somebody else every time. But back to your original question. Um, if Lamar had a game like that, 19 for 22, 300 plus yards, three touchdowns, and he ran for another touchdown. So four total touchdowns, 300 plus passing yards, only missed three passes, didn't throw any picks, but the defense gives up a late touchdown and field goal. They will say Lamar Jackson should have done more. They will say, oh, this was a drive where Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens offense didn't score. He should have done more. Oh, this was a drive where they ended up having a punt. He should have done better. This was a drive where they could have at least gotten a field goal, but they, they didn't. He should have done more. So either way, like if that were to happen, then it would, it would make the game closer. 
Well, possibly, but it, it, it but, well, obviously it was closer because you said he would have 20 seconds left to get 80 yards on the game-winning drive. But they would still find something to say. And, and again, you're right. Lamar Jackson in the playoffs, he has not played his best ball. We want to see the regular season Lamar Jackson, the MVP Lamar Jackson. We want to see him in the playoffs. And he's had moments now. For sure. Like we talked about yesterday in the video where we talk about Julian Edelman calling him out. Lamar has done some very, very special things. Even just last year in the Texans playoff game. That was probably his best playoff performance yet. Two touchdowns running. Two touchdowns pass. He, he got it both ways. So that's what I've been saying, man. That, that, oh, you, you just do your thing, man. You ain't got to worry about, oh, I got to prove that I'm this. I ain't got to prove. No, we know who you. We know how special you are. Show them. Continue. Be special. Don't try to play like no. Play like you and be special. That's what got you here. That's what got you to this point in your career. That's what got you so much of your success. Keep being you. And don't let nobody deter you from being you. That's it. In my opinion, stick to being you and just play winning football. 